Welcome to 7.4 Inverse Functions. So chapter 7 is just going to continue to talk about all sorts of different types of functions or not functions for the rest of this chapter 7, 4, 7, 5, and 7, 6. And today we're talking about something called an inverse. So you should know an inverse, the official definition is that it maps the output values, which are the y's, back to the input values. So it maps the output values back to the input values. So let me tell you, my Miss Olson specialty unofficial definition is the x's become the y's and the y's become the x's. So that's what's happening. In inverse is where the x's and y's switch places basically. So let's suppose that I had an, a, a relation. We don't know yet if it's a function, so relation is just a term to mean any set of ordered pairs. So here's my relation. And while I give you these pairs, we're going to go ahead and graph it at this graph right over here. So the first ordered pair is negative 2, 4. There it is, negative 2, 4. Next, negative 1, 2. All right, next, 0, 0. There it is. All right, next, 1, negative 2, and last but not least, 2, negative 4. All right, there it is. Now, to make our inverse relation, when I say the x's and y's switch, literally, the x's and y's switch. So everything that was a y is now an x, And everything that was a x is now a y. And now I'm going to graph our new relation we made, the inverse relation, and then I'll show you kind of like how the graphs are related. So I'm going to go through and graph these points. So 4 comma negative 2. All right, there it is. 2 comma negative 1, 0, 0, okay. Negative 2 comma 1, and negative 4 comma 2. All right, there's our graph. So you may not be able to recognize this pattern because you haven't been working with this a lot yet, but what's happening is that the graph of the inverse, and this goes for any, any inverse I graph, the inverse of the graph is always reflected across the line y equals x. And the line y equals x, if you think of it as like y equals 1x plus 0. So it starts at 0, 0 for the y-intercept and it has a slope of 1. So this is my line y equals x. And if you look at what happened here, these points if I took a piece of paper and if I folded it in, uh, in half along that line, these points would match up. Do you see what I'm saying? So all of these points, the ones that match, so like that one matches with that one, if I folded it in half along that line, they would match up. So that's one way you can kind of eyeball something to see if it's a function or not. And if I had some paper, maybe we'll show you in class some examples. I don't know. We'll see if we have time. All right, so that's what it looks like as a graph. Now I want to show you some notation of inverses. So you should know inverses are notated by a negative 1. So let's say I had that I wanted to find the inverse of f of x. The inverse of f of x is notated by f negative 1 x. So I agree with you. It, doesn't it look like it's f to the negative 1 exponent? It's not though. That's the way they say f inverse. So this you would read f inverse of x. And sometimes they don't even put the x. Sometimes they just put f to the negative 1. That means we're finding the inverse. I just showed you a second ago how to find the inverse with ordered pairs. And that's something you will have to be doing on your assignment. We're also going to find the inverse just algebraically. And there's a special process to this that you have learned before, so this is review. 
But to find the inverse, remember I said we're switching x and y? That's our first step. So to find an inverse of something, we're going to switch x and y. And then step two, we're going to solve for y. Quick side note, sometimes, sometimes they say f of x to start off with, though. So sometimes you're going to switch y and f of x. And I'm going to say more about that on the back page because f of x equals y from what we learned the other day. All right, so let's go through it. Step one, and for example 1a, switch x and y. Cool. Step two, I'm going to solve for y. That means my final goal is to get y all by itself. So when I look at this, normal equation solving. Add four to both sides. You usually want to add or subtract first. And then to get rid of the two, I'll divide by two. And if you wrote it like that, that would be okay. And I believe the back of the book, honestly, is going to split this up. So they're going to, instead of dividing it all at once, they're going to divide the x and the 4 at a separate time and end up with x over 2 plus 2. So if you're trying to check your answer in the back of the book, I'd recommend you do this just so that it matches. But there we are. Go ahead and pause and try part B. Okay, if you have unpaused it, I'm just going to do this one pretty fast, so make sure you pause the video if you need to go a little slower. That's fine. But I just, I'm doing this fast because I want to check your work. All right, this time to get rid of the negative one-third, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. And remember, when I do that, i got to do it to both pieces. So I end up with negative 3x plus 6 for my inverse this time. Another thing we're going to do with this is we are going to do verifying if two things are inverses. So what they're going to do with this type of problem is they're going to give you two different functions and they're going to say verify that if they're inverses or not. So our answer is going to be a yes or no and we can tell if it's yes or no because I'm going to tell you that two functions are inverses if and here's where the composition of functions from 7, 3 comes in. If f of g of x is equal to x and g of f of x is equal to x. And it will be equal to x each time. So if both of those are true, then yes, they're inverses. If both of those are not true, then they're not inverses. And when you do this during assignment time, I'm, we're, you have to show your work to verify this. You can't just say yes or no. So you're being graded on your work you show to verify. So here's what I'm going to do then. First, I'm going to find f of the f inverse then I'm going to find f inverse of the f. So I'm going to just take turns plugging these into each other. All right, so this is going to be a little confusing, so watch closely. The inverse is 1 half x plus 2, so that's what I'm, what's going on in my mind. And then remember, you write down the function we're using, so this time f is on the outside, so I'm using this function, 2x minus 4. I left a little blank for x because remember that's where now I erase erase and plug in what I wanted to change it to which is what's in this parentheses. And now I'm going to simplify. So distribute the 2. 2 times a half is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. Wow, 4 minus 4 is x. Check, that side worked. Now we need to do the other side. So again, I would recommend write down the function you're going to plug in. So f of x, this time I'm going the other way. This time I'm going to plug in 2x minus 4 and f of negative 1 is what I'm plugging it into. So f of negative 1 looks like this. It's 1 half x, only I replace x with a parentheses, and then I'm going to stick 2x minus 4 right in there. All right, distribute. 1 half times 2 is 1. 1 half times negative 4 is negative 2. And it ends up being an answer of x again. So, yes, these are inverses. If you feel like you need extra practice, pause the video and try part B. 
Okay, if you have unpaused, I'm going to go through this one a little quicker, but you can ask some questions to clarify during class later tomorrow if you need it. Okay, so again, I got to test it both ways. So first I'm plugging in the F inverse into F, and then I'm going to plug F into F inverse. Wow, confusing. Okay, so first I'm plugging in F inverse into F. So I'll write that in the parentheses. And then the outside function is F. So that's what I write down. Where X was, I leave a space. And that's where I plug in this part of it. So I plugged one function right into the other one, right where X was. Now I'm going to simplify. So distribute. Negative 3 times negative a third is positive 1. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And keep going. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Check. And now going the other way. This time, I want to plug F in. So F is negative 3x plus 6. And this time, F inverse is on the outside. So I'm going to write down my F inverse. And again, instead of X, put a parentheses. And then I'm going to put in what I'm plugging in right into the parentheses. And then I'm going to simplify. So distribute. Negative a third times negative 3 is 1. Negative a third times 6 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is just x. So check again. Yes, they are inverses. This is the end of part 1 for 7.4. Welcome to 7.4 part 2. So looking at the back page of your notes sheet, we're going to now be finding more inverses and talking about something called the horizontal line test. So actually, we're going to be doing the same thing we did for example 1. The only reason it's in a different section is now the functions we're given are things like x squared, x to the fifth, stuff like that. So it's a little bit different than what we did before. And also, they're going to give it to you an official function notation with the f of x. But same thing we did before where step 1, you're going to switch x and y. Step two, we're going to solve for y. And now, the reason I wanted to make this in a special area is, <coughs> whoa, that is my dog, if you can hear that. My dog hates cats. If, we see, if she sees one outside, it's just bark, 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 bark for a really long time. Anyways, okay, so what I was saying before was f of x is y. So if it, it might help your brain if before you do anything, just remember f of x is the same thing as y. So I have not yet done step one yet. All I've done is told you that f of x is y. So I haven't switched them yet. All right, now I'm going to do step one and switch them. So step one, switch x and y. Step two, solve for y. To get rid of a square, we square root. And when I square root something, I put that plus or minus in front. So the inverse of x squared is plus or minus square root of x, and now that we're doing official function notation, we're going to do our inverse in official function notation. So I would say f inverse is equal to plus or minus the square root of x. There you go. All right, so for each of these, remember, f of x is really y, so don't let that throw you off. All right, part b. So y equals x to the fifth. Step one, switch x and y. Step two, solve for y. To get rid of a fifth power, I take the fifth root. When you take an odd root, you do not need the plus or minus. When you take an even root, you do. So this one is just the fifth root of x. And so in official function notation, my inverse is the fifth root of x. So now let me say something really quick. The reason you needed two answers if it's an even root is because, let's say that I wanted my answer to be 4 or something. This is just a side note. There are two things that I could plug in to make it 4 if it's an even power. So there's going to be two answers in your when you take a square root. But if I had an odd if I had an odd power, there's only one way I can get something because if I change the positive or negative, it's a different number, so it's not the same. So when you have an odd root, you don't put the plus or minus there. When you have an even root, you do. It does get slightly harder. So let's look at example C. So again, remember, f of x is just y. Step one, switch y and x. 
Step two, solve for y. So we're going to use normal equation solving things, but there's going to be some stuff with order of operations you might kind of not be sure about, so pay close attention. If this was a normal y, I would normally add two to both sides first. That's what I do here. So add or subtract first if you can. We're basically doing the order of operations backwards whenever you solve an equation. And then I want to tell you that before you take a cube root, we have to get everything over here. So that's why I wanted to add two first. So I wanted to get rid of the two, and I also want to get rid of the one half, and then when I have y cubed by itself at the very end, that's when you take your root. So don't take your root until the very end. To get rid of a one half, let's multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides by two over one. And so when I do that, I got two x plus four on the left side, and now y cubed is by itself. All right. So I'm going to just say get the power by itself before taking a root. And I hope you're looking at this and in your mind you're thinking, oh, it's a y cubed, so to get rid of a cube, I'm going to cube root it. And it's an odd root I just did, so I don't have to put the plus or minus in front. And in official function notation, the cubed root of 2x plus 4 equals f inverse of x. And notice how I had to cube root both sides and 2x plus 4 are both underneath the root. That's really important. If you don't show both of them under the root, you lose points for that. And they're both under the root because they were both on that side that I was cube rooting at that time. Part D. Why don't you pause the video and try it on your own? All right, if you are unpausing, you should have an answer of plus or minus the square root of 1 half x or x over 2 plus 2. So let me sh if you got it correct, move on. If you didn't, let me show you how I got that. Switch my x and y. And again, before I root it, I want to get my power by itself. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides to start off with. I'm going to divide by 2. And when you multiply or divide, do it to everything. And I also could have said multiply by a half. Either one would have been correct. And now to get rid of a square, I'm going to square root it. And because it's an even root I'm doing, I put the plus or minus in front. And that's how I got this for my answer. Last but not least for this section of notes, we're going to talk about how to figure out if something's a function just by looking at the graph. So we talked about determining if two things are inverses of each other. But this is different because now I want to know, like, well, you can find an inverse that is not a function. So we want to know, let's say I found an inverse. Is my inverse a function or not? And sometimes the inverse is not a function, like I just said. I'll just write that down in case you want to jot it down as well. Your choice, though. Sometimes the inverse is not a function. So in order to figure out if it is or not, we have a handy dandy test that we're going to do and review from Geo2. Do you remember to figure out if a normal graph is a function or not? We did the vertical line test. And I'll give you an example of that with example 4a. But we use a vertical line test to determine if something is a function and that was performed on the original graph. Okay, so if I was going to do review vertical line test, I would have taken my picture, I would have tried to draw a vertical line, and if it only touches my graph in one spot, then yes, it's a function. And so if I look at part B, I draw a vertical line, only hits it in one spot, Yes, the original is a function. So everything I just did, that was review. Now I want to teach you the new thing. So this is called the horizontal line test. And the horizontal line test, we actually do it on the original graph as well. So we perform the horizontal line graph, uh, um, test on the original graph, and it tells us if the inverse is a function or not. So here's what I mean. Like I have my original graph. I don't know what the inverse looks like. 
I do a horizontal line test and that actually will tell me if it only hits in one spot yes the inverse is also a function for example 1a so this is the part that students think is kind of weird you do the horizontal line test also on the original graph so vertical line test on the original graph and the horizontal line test on the original graph. You don't actually have to graph the inverse to figure this out. All right, so let's look at example B again. To figure out if the inverse is a function or not, I do my horizontal line test. If it touches twice, then it's a no. So this time, no, the inverse is not a function. Let's do two more. And now here for these, we're going to have to graph them on our own. We haven't really done any reviews of graph yet, graphs yet, so I hope you remember how to do this. But if you get stuck and you're not sure what to do, you could go in your graphing calculator and type it under y equals and try to look at the picture. For this first one, I can see that it's a linear something or other because I just see a regular x. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, y-intercept and slope. So I'm going to graph my original. So my, I'm going to start with the y-intercept down at negative 6. Now I'm going to use my slope to find my next point. The slope is 3 fourths. So up 1, 2, 3 over 1, 2, 3, 4. Up 1, 2, 3 over 1, 2, 3, 4. That's enough for us to be able to use our tests. So first of all, is the, inver or is the original a function? Uh, yes. Original is a function. Next question, is the inverse a function? Only hits it once, so yes, inverse is a function. All right, the graph y equals x squared minus 6. Again, you can use y equals on your graphing calculator. And then here's what I would do if I were you. Go under y equals, type this in, and then look at your table of values. So you're going to hit second and then the graph key, and that gets you to the table, and that'll give you the exact x, y, so that you can make exact points on your graph. When you're doing this on your homework, you can kind of just make a try to do some exact points, but it's not going to look super great. That's okay with me. We don't have to use graph paper for this. So if I go through and do this, I end up with something that looks like this. So that's approximately what it looks like. And you can see this is very similar to B, so you probably can just look at it and know the answers, but is the original a function? Yes. Original is a function. Is the inverse a function? No. The inverse is not a function. It hits it twice. All right, that is the end of 7.4. Yay!